Sir, your s the 2001 elections changed him? That's what you're saying? I think 2001 really changed him, and, and, and after that, there was, um, there, were, there was a period of three years that he was not in public life. And for the first few months, there were, there were times where I would see him in deep thought. You know, he would come and visit us in the office and just stay there quiet. Um, and he, I think he took the, the time really to ponder what he had accomplished in life and what he had yet to accomplish. And there was, again, this, some intramurals between me and him in terms of, uh, of uh, how the company was supposed to be going, which, what direction it was going to take and how it was going to grow. And uh, there was some disagreement there. And, and, and I remember that in March of 2002, I decided to resign formally. I had resigned, you know, I had given up everything in, uh, in, as far as running Jaka uh, Investment Corporation was concerned when I got elected as congressman. But I had decided to be out of the board, resign from the corporation, uh, and basically give up everything uh, in March of 2002. And I had actually wanted to talk to him that day, that he was in the office. And, I, and that was the day that I think he, he made the decision to write his life story. Uh, because he told me, you know, the Filipino people really don't, don't know who I am. I'm going to write a book that's going to tell them who I am. Didn't you say you also didn't know your father until... And, and, and the truth is, when he told me that, you know, he goes, even you, son, he goes, even you, you don't know who I am. And I think he said that with, with, a, with a set of mixed feelings of, of part disappointment, part longingness, a little bit of anger, a little bit of regret. And when he said that, I decided to keep quiet. And the reason I knew it was that day in March of 2002 was I had that letter that I wrote to him resigning and telling him the reasons why. In his, in his book, sir, he wrote about his family. And there was a part there where he said he regrets that he wasn't more involved. He wasn't more present, he wasn't, wasn't more available. And when he wanted to do that, it was already too late. What yeah. did he mean by that? Well, we're, even my, I, I, I consider myself to be a, a great dad to, to my kids. Um, and the reason for that is I, I wanted to be different from my own dad. Uh, and even now, I, we, we brought a, 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 a daughter of ours, our youngest, my youngest daughter, to the States. Uh, and at 20, she has her own life. And, and you have a window basically 19 to 20 years that your kids are with you and after that they're pretty much on their own. Which is, was the case with, with me, you know, when I was uh, in my late teens and early 20s, I was out of the family house already, living on my own in the States. Trying to go to school, doing other things, doing a lot of foolishness, <laughs> getting into a lot of uh, my own personal uh, troubles there and, and learning from those uh, experiences. Um, and I guess when, when we reached that point in our lives, he was not, he was, it was too late for him. It was too late for him to, to establish a relationship with his children. He has since tried to reconnect. And he has been a very loving, kind, available man in his later years. This happened in the past? As far as my case, to, since 2006. When he and I re reconciled, when he, he and I had this long, long, painful talk in his house, when he and I decided to, to put our differences aside and bury the hatchet. What was the, the biggest difference that you were able to talk about? You know, there's a lot more similarities between me and him than there are differences. And I guess that's the reason why we're bumping heads. You get, you get two pieces of metal and you, you start bumping like this and Pretty soon, the more you bump, the more they start to be mirror image of one another. And his experiences are different from mine. My experiences are entirely different from his. But there is no denying the fact that he is my father and that I am his son. So there's more, more similarities than there are differences. The difference really is in, I guess, personal philosophy in life. He tends to be a little bit more conservative. I tend to be the risk taker in, in the family. Can you give us stories of how conservative he is and you are more? Well, uh, 
my father will will spend the time to look for 10 centavos, the 10 centavos that is missing, <laughs> while missing the opportunity to make millions of pesos here. He, his philosophy in life is it's better to lose opportunity than it is to lose money. And mine is completely the opposite. I said, I will go. That's the way I ran the business in Jaka. That's why it grew so, so quickly in the four years that I was running it. I, was, I always thought that it's opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Go for it, go for it. So in concrete terms, how did this happen in real life? And when, when, Jaka, when, Jaka, when I took over Jaka in 1990, I think the net income of Jaka was about 90 million over a gross sales of about 430. By the time I left Jaka in 1998, it had basically a turnover of close to 1.2 billion or 1.3 billion, with a with a with a net profit of somewhere around 460 to 500 million, I think that year. And you argued about how you managed. And basically, how to how to divest in some businesses and and look for new opportunities in other areas. Um, but that's not your biggest fight when you had to. The biggest fights basically came out of personal political philosophies, believe it or not. Personal political. I don't know if he still has that letter that I wrote to him. Uh, I know it was not included in the book. Just before Edsa. What did you write? Questioning about why he was still with Marcos. And I, and I think the only person that he showed it to was Doyle Laurel. And I think Doyle Laurel in one article, magazine article, even mentioned that letter. I'm not sure if my father still has that letter. I, I don't. It was only one letter. I know. And what did you say in that letter? I, said, I, I just said, I cannot understand how a man such as you, having achieved what you've achieved in your life, can serve a man like Marcos. Still. And I remember he received that letter one or two days before he decided to go for it. And he hugged me. He cried and he hugged me. And he says, don't worry, Iho, don't worry. Everything will be fine. And he says, go. And you were happy when he joined Ed. He is most real when he shows his emotions. There was a sense when he was in public life that you, when you see him, he would always have this, you know, really clean cut, always, always dressed up like a, like a dandy, like his, like his father. Uh, always uh, prim and proper, even very measured in, in his tone when he speaks. But he would be most real to me when he would show his his emotional side. When he would get angry, when he would cry, when he would be disappointed, when he would not be guarded. He would be the most real person you will ever know. The man, if you were at the book launch last Thursday, the man who was, whose voice was cracking, the man whose, 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 whose tears were shedding, uh, whose eyes were shedding tears, the man who, who, who did not want to look at the crowd because he was about to cry is the real one Ponce and really. All those years of pain of growing up as a poor boy came to the surface on that day and that was him. With all the insecurities, with all the regrets, with all the aspirations, with all the joy that his life has brought him. That was the man that was present at that moment. That and was at, one point, said really. And at this point, sir, your relationship is at that stage where you can be honest with each other. This is the first time that my father and I have ever joined together in a political exercise. Willingly. <laughs> uh, he never campaigned for me ever in my life. I never campaigned for him ever in my life. In fact, you know, I, I would like to echo uh, one of the comments of my classmate. And, and it was seconded by the other classmates when he said it in 2010. And he goes, we were, we have, we were have, having dinner here. And he goes, Jack, I just want you to know, to know this last election, 2010, was the first time I ever voted for your father. 
ever. And, and I could understand why. I could understand why. Uh, even growing up, having been subjected to the kind of exposure that a, a son of a, of a political figure like Juan Ponce really has had, sort of turns you off in terms of what they were doing at the time. And even to the point of cringing sometimes as to, as to uh, what, what they were thinking. You know, you would be privy to certain conversations. And, and some of the things that, that, they were, that they were talking about, I was just shaking my head and I said, I'm leaving, you know, I'm going to the States. I'm having my own life. I don't want to be part of this. He has anything to do with your decision to run for the Senate? No. Um, the decision to run for the Senate, well, the seed came in about late in 2006 when my wife accepted uh, the challenge to run for my seat in, in, in Congress. After your last term. And, and we talked a little bit about it. And we, I, you know, I said, thinking just out loud to her, I said, if this works out and the way I think it will work out, we might have a shot to, maybe not in 2010, but later to run for the Senate. And, and we have to plan it accordingly. But it wasn't really that serious. It was just a thought that husband and wife were sharing with one another. For someone who hesitated to join politics, that's a big that's, change. That's a big change. And I think it came, it, it came from the realization of that August day in 2006 when my father reconciled. And I saw a different man from what I had known even a few years before. And I saw a change in him and I saw an earnestness and a sincerity in his voice and in his eyes that said, I really want to dedicate the next few years of remaining in my life in the service of this country that I love so much. And he used those very words, that I love so much. He has a great, even at this point, no. He has a greater love for this country than any man that I know. Not because he is my father, but I can see that in his eyes. It's really burning there. He may not say it, but you can see it when he talks about how much he loves this country. You can see it about when he talks about Cagayan. You know, when, he, when you talk to him about Cagayan, it's like the most beautiful place in the world. And it is to him. It is to him. And when I saw that, deep down, and I told this to my wife, I said, Daddy has changed, and that is the brand of politics that I want. That is it. That is what I want. And if you win, you're going to share three years with him in the Senate. Hopefully, Can you if imagine I how that will be like? It will be the first time he and I will ever be working together. At this point in my life, I'm looking forward to it. I hope I will be given the opportunity to do so. Um, I, I do not have the, the remarkable story of Juan Ponce Enrique. I am his son. Uh, I am his namesake. But given the opportunity, I would like to follow in his footsteps now that I have seen the kind of person that he has become. I would really like to follow in his footsteps. If given that opportunity, I would like to pursue and continue the legacy that he has started. Hopefully build on it and see what will become of a, a man like me who's had my own checkered past. And I've, just like the Filipino people have given one point and really a second chance, I hope they're able to give Jack or Jackie and really a second chance as well.